the state of Texas, the roof is open, and we've got football from NRG Stadium in Houston. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here, as it'll be the New Orleans Saints taking on the Houston Texans. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Houston set to take over. They run with the former Buffalo Bill, Devin Singletary. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. Just like that, a pickup of 20 on their first play from scrimmage. That was pretty much mean potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at them and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all, challenging that defense. And on that go around, the offense won the challenge. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. No sense risking anything there on first down, even though he's still in the pocket. He had a receiver out to his side, so he'll just put that in a spot where the only people who could make a play on it are the trainers and the coaches. Well done. Now a second and 10. I got you, I got you, son. I got you, son. 56. Let's go. Again on second down, it's Stroud. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. So, Charles, you know, take nothing away from this young man under center because I know people think he's got a very bright future in this league, but I have to figure the defensive coordinators love the thought of squaring off against a rookie quarterback. And especially if they have guys they can put together a game plan with that's going to confuse, disguise a lot of coverage, Make this kid. Now the ball comes loose. And this is picked up by the Saints. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. They're coming out with a jumbo package to start the drive. In his seventh season now, here's Alvin Kamara. And he finds a little bit of room, enough for four yards. It'll be second down. Well, in every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Second down, and it's Kamara again. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. I think if we put together a job description for a middle linebacker, we would start with being able to hold down things in the middle of the line of scrimmage and be able to take out blockers. But how about the guys who can go sideline to sideline and make plays? Love a guy that can do that. We saw a perfect example of it right there. From the gun now on third down, Carr. That is caught. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 17 there in a New Orleans first down. After getting that turnover on the first drive of the game, you'd hate to just stall out the momentum, go three and out. They're able to avoid that there. Yeah, we talk about complimentary football all the time, but I think it's a little bit deeper than that. Defense went out, forced a turnover, gave the ball to the offense. It's now the offense's responsibility to pay that off for them, to show respect to them. Hey, you guys got the turnover? <laughs> we appreciate it. They want to continue their drive. Give them three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. Throwing now is Carr. Over the middle and complete to Shahid. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 27-yard line. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. Really been an ideal start for them. They get the turnover on the opening possession. Now here they are moving the ball straight down the field on their first drive. And that feels good, but you know on their side of the field, all they're thinking is finish this drive off because they took it away, right? So now you've got them back on their heels. And he's going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. They dial up the corner blitz that time, and it delivers. 
Rodgers to the tune of a nine-yard loss. Now defensively on the previous play, they gave up a pretty good chunk of yardage, but right there, they got a good portion of it right back. And if we just flip it around from the offensive perspective, took a nice step forward, and how about a couple of leaps backwards after that play? They've got to figure out a big call coming up here to try and gain that yardage back. A partner guaranteed they approach this play with the idea of making up ground to make third down manageable. Unfortunately, with that incompletion, right back where they started on the last snap. Now they need a big third down play in order to pick up the yardage needed. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. From the gun, it's Carr. Throw left side complete. That's Johnson. And this will not get close to the first down marker as he's brought down at the 26. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, like hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies unable to get it done. So the defense are able to force their first turnover of the game, and then they add on to that by getting the field goal. And you don't just want to take the ball away from your opponent, partner. You want to make them hurt as well. And if you don't score yourself on defense, turn it over to your offense and have them put points on the board. on the tee and the Saints kick team booms it away taking it about the one and able to get this out to the 25 so now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game they fumbled the last time they had the football fortunate that it only led to a field goal three nothing the score as they start first and ten Here's Stroud. They'll get this into the hands of Nico Collins. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A good pick up there, 21 yards. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. A man coming off a great rookie year. It's Damian Pierce. And yeah, they string that play out nicely. He stopped before he can turn up field. No gain, second down. Defensively, though, they had a chance there to hit him for a loss. Couldn't get it done. Looked like someone was able to knife into the backfield, but he wasn't able to get him down. But his compatriots, they were able to grab him at the line of scrimmage and not let him get any further downfield. Three nothing after one on EA Sports. Second and ten. And Stroud now to throw. And that one too wide and incomplete. I tell you what, that's a veteran play from a guy in his first season in the NFL. A lot of rookies are trying to force something there. He thought better of it, and that was the right decision. An incomplete pass on second down. That muddles things a little bit here. This is third and ten. Stroud on third down now. This one incomplete, probably should have been picked. A little nonchalant with a throw to the safety valve, but it's fourth down. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. The Texans send the punter out. Deep for New Orleans is Rashid Shaheed. 
And this works out well as it'll kick out of bounds at the 11-yard line. New Orleans Saints, they get ready to set up shop for their second drive. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> not one that I've ever met. He got 29 yards that time. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field, and here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Now a first down carry. It's Kamara. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Well, I think after that run, the defense is getting back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? Meanwhile, Carr is so complete there to Thomas. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. First grab for Thomas. It's good for a first down as well. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. Kamara up the middle. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Carr. On the check down, he finds Kamara. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. Here's Kamara trying to run for it. On a nice burst there as he'll take this inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. The Saints first down there on a gain of 11. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? Important to do, especially early in the game like they have. The car's throw caught by Alave. And they'll get him down inside the red zone at the 14. It's also a gain of 14. First down. Boy, everything clicking on this drive. He's four for four now, and that throw may be the best of the bunch. This offense is really humming, and they pick up another first down. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. And he'll get about three just outside the 10 step to the 11. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive. And once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Second and seven. Here's Carr to throw. Over the middle into traffic, and that's complete. And the Saints are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Camara will score. Touchdown, New Orleans. 
two good drives on their first two possessions. Remember, the first wound up in a field goal, but we all know field goals aren't going to cut it in the NFL. So they're not going to be denied here, and they wind up punching this one into the end zone. Extra point forthcoming. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10 zip. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And he brings this out past the 20 to the 24. And now out comes Houston. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Stroud caught by Woods and he'll be brought down on the 30 yard line after a gain of six one thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes you're able to hit a receiver in stride and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch but in this situation the defense was effective able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going Stroud to throw it he finds his target. It's Schultz. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Second and 10, Stroud to throw yet again here. Finds his man, it's John Mechie. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. First and 10 here, and you know, if they could just get three out of this, something about whittling it to a one-score game at half that might provide a psychological boost. Stroud's throw taken in by Collins. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Here goes Stroud again. This ball caught by Mechie. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. Just picking up the yardage and bunches here. These last few plays, they have moved right down the field. And just like that, they can be set up with a first and goal. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Pete Werner. And the Saints are going to get it back here just shy of the 20. 15 seconds, all that remains for this first half as they come up first and 10. 
And they'll indeed start on the ground to run that clock. And he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run. Shaquille Griffin in on the stop defensively. So we reach halftime here in a 10-point game as we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman in our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. Set now to go for the third quarter. The Saints have the lead and set to receive the kick. And he will not bring it out. It's a touchback. Getting set for their next drive, the New Orleans offense. This offense set to begin the third quarter, and Charles, if they had a checklist of things they wanted to accomplish in the first half, certainly at the top of that list would be having the lead, and they've got that here. That's always the most important box to check, isn't it? But also, they've had some success in their passing game, so probably an empty box establishing the run. They're on pace for fewer than 100 yards in this one, so now they want to make sure that they get that going so they truly have a control in this ball game and down the stretch, being able to be balanced either throw it or run it and try and win this ball game. And incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Here's Carr. Complete. Well, it's too early to figure out what kind of adjustments this defense made at halftime, but that's a good start to the second half. They can now afford to give up more points and fall further behind, so well done to force the punting situation here. Here comes the Saints punter now. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. yards on the punt just two on the return and the Texans will take over now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half now this game it has obviously been all about the defense on both sides of the football which offense is going to break through here we'll see if they can do it on this drive Now they'll throw it with Stroud here, first and ten. That'll be caught left side by Woods. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. Solid way to start the drive, 13 yards, picking up the first. Well, that's the kind of play that was lacking all the way through the first half. Maybe this can give them a little bit of a spark because they're not out of this game by any stretch. First and ten, it's Pierce. And no room that time, getting it to about the 46. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. No doubt about it, a really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. Well, they get to Stroud, nowhere to go, and he goes down. Brian Brzee fought in and got him down. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense, so he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Stroud here on third and long. He'll get this out wide to Singletary. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. He'll get 17 back there, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. He'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for 
is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Now yeah, this will leave them a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Second down in a yard. A tenth carry for Kamara. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. 46 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. They were not fooling around at all, were they? Second and short, and they brought out the heavy package. Almost felt like the super heavy package against that defense, didn't it? Yeah, I don't think they expected that much beef up front, and it turned into an easy first down conversion. On first down, Carr. They'll get this out to Kamara. Now he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. On second down, Kamara. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. I think we're seeing the effect that runs like that are starting to have on this game. They're a little bit slower, that front seven reacting to the football, almost like body blows in boxing, slowing them down, and they're really starting to take over in this game. Car now on first down. He completes it to Alave. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. The end result, 21 yards. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. Oh, he was hit as he threw it there, and that one winds up incomplete. And here, you're down in the red zone. You need to be smart, not force anything. So that's a wise decision to just get rid of the football. Second and 10. Thanks for tagging along with us here from Houston, Texas. Back to the ground. It's Kamara. And he'll take it from the 18 to the 15. A gain of three. That play reminded me a lot of a former teammate of mine. We used to call him the trash man. His ability to sift through traffic and make plays was uncanny. And that's exactly what you want from your Mike linebacker. This will be the eighth play of the drive. It's third and seven. Now Carr. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And the Saints are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Beautiful throw right there on third down, and it looked like this was going to be six points, but a nice touchdown-saving tackle at the end of this. Even still, this offense is knocking on the door now with a first and goal at the one. Try to pound it in, Kamara. And he'll barrel his way into the end zone for a Saint touchdown. Alvin Kamara, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Saints are able to extend their lead in the final seconds of this third quarter. Now the try here for the extra point. He's got it, and it's 17-0. The ball upright on the tee, and the Saints kick team booms it away.
And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. They were trying to create some space to run. They created the penalty. And you work on it so much. You work on it so hard. But it's tough to simulate game speed in practice. And that often runs you into a penalty. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. First and ten, it's Stroud. And he'll get this underneath the six. Oh, now he's stripped. He lost the football. And this is picked up by the Saints. And it's a big turnover there on the final play of the quarter. So it'll be a change of possession on the turnover when we get back. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. They'll pound it up the middle with Kamara. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. 82 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Well, we're beyond the tone setting right now. This guy's been the bell cow all day, and they'll continue to rely on him to move the chains, drain the clock, and lead his team. They'll run it with Kamara. Yeah, he'll work free from one tackle, but that's about all as he's taken down. He'll get two out of that run, and it's going to bring up a second and goal. All of a sudden, those lanes that were there earlier in the drive dry up near the goal line. That's a good job defensively to diagnose the run and stop it for a very short pickup. A man who's been busy this afternoon, it's Kamara again. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft, and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. They'll try to run it in. It's Kamara. And I don't think Kamara got there. Looks like they stopped him short. Only a yard that time, so now a decision to be made here on fourth and goal. Defense didn't budge on third down. Now what are we going to see on fourth? We are soon to find out, but does this feel like old school football or what? Oh, right? yeah. This is an old-fashioned goal line stand. I know what I would call on offense. I would go for it. I want some type of a play where my quarterback has it. That is caught by Alave. Touchdown, New Orleans. A great play there. There to make the grab. And the Saints' decision to go for it pays off with six points. There was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Extra point right down the middle. And the lead is now 24. The ball upright on the tee, and the Saints kick team booms it away. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Heading out is the Texans offense as they get set to take over here. At this point, partner, things looking pretty bleak. They still haven't scored here in the fourth quarter, facing the big deficit. I just, what silver linings, what can they look to do here offensively? You know, it's funny, I talked about this with a coach in the offseason and kind of had this scenario, like, what feels good to you and what feels good to your team? You're down big. You really have, like, one. Is this intercepted? It is. It's intercepted. Picked off by Paulson and Debo. And the Saints are going to get it back here just past the 35. The Saints offense on the field ready to get their drive started. 
And after the interception, they are sitting in an even better spot with the ball and a comfortable fourth quarter lead. Denzel Perryman there to bring him down. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL, and he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time, so make sure you get in shape. That is incomplete. I think it's fairly safe to call this game over, but they're still trying to bomb it downfield and add to their lead. Almost makes you start to feel for the defense and root for them a little bit, too. Here comes the Saints punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Texans will take over with a first and ten. Out comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here. Well, I hate to say it, but at this point, I don't really know that they're playing to win with this deficit in the fourth quarter. They're just trying to erase that zero on the scoreboard, Charles, and get some type of momentum to carry into the film session tomorrow. If you get any type of points on the board, it'll count as a moral victory, although no one will talk about that in the post-game press conference. That's not something you mentioned in the NFL. And this loss, it already stings and will for a while, but everyone on that offense knows it'll sting a lot worse if they don't put some points up on the board. Stroud to the air on first and 10. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. So nothing doing there, and it's second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Now they got to get to the line quickly. Stroud looking to throw. Then he drops it incomplete, and their struggles continue here. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. They had the incomplete pass on second down. Now they need a big play here, third and ten. Again, it's Drowned. And that is incomplete, but a penalty flag coming in. This could be a first down. Well, CD, that helps the home team as they try to erase this deficit, give them the penalty for pass interference on the defense. Yeah, and they certainly haven't been happy with what they've seen so far, have they? They're certainly hoping that that call now might get the fans back into this one. Maybe a critical mistake at this juncture is now they've got a first and 10. Stroud. That one tipped, and it's incomplete. A good hands there defensively at second down. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Throwing now is Stroud. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. And the offense moving quickly to the line. Now here's Stroud on third down. Pass taken in by his big tight end. 
And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 20-yard line. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. Nice game there, partner, but you and I both know that won't do anything for the final score. They're not going to win this one. Right now, they're playing for pride and fantasy points. <laughs> and just to erase that goose egg, nobody wants to be shut out. On first down, here's Stroud. And that'll be incomplete. Now defensively, you look at the numbers. Another incomplete pass that we just saw, and they're under 200 yards passing for the game, so they've done their job on that side of the ball. Yeah, recently I was actually working a game where a quarterback had a streak of five straight games without a 200-yard game, and that was a big talk both in his town and amongst his team. How do we get the passing game going? So big credit to them holding them under 200 today. And that one going to be off target and incomplete. Well, it just seems like all game long there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page, quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements. Now a battle for the football. It's caught. It's a touchdown. Nico Collins, a 20-yard touchdown. And the Texans are finally into the end zone here in this fourth quarter. Charles, that's a pretty good response from a rookie quarterback. He's had his struggles in this game, including the interception on the last drive, but there he takes him down the field and puts it in the end zone. I agree with everything you just said right there, and there's a silver lining to all of this, his resiliency, because let's face it, when things are going bad and you're a youngster, they often continue to go bad. But in his mind and his actions, he said, this stops right here. And how about the positive play he just turned in? So time definitely not in their favor. Down two scores, but they'll try the onside kick. And the Saints are going to get to this one. So that should about do it. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. We've got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. And he was able to shed one tackle but could not get away from there. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as they stop it with 14 seconds to go in the game. The New Orleans offense back out and ready to go. And still two timeouts defensively, but even if they choose to use those, three kneel downs should be enough to get out of here with a victory. And that's exactly what's being stated into the head coach's headset. Oftentimes they have a guy upstairs who monitors this at the end of the game. Little clock management 101. Now a final chance to stop it here as a timeout comes in with 10 seconds left in the game. Here's third and three. Again, it's Kamara. And he will have a Saints first down. It has been a struggle, but it's looking like that'll be the one to seal a victory for him. Just about do it. So the 
this one a victory here for New Orleans. And we talk so much about the turnover battle, determining who wins, who loses. This game, no exception. Air-free football, no turnovers at all, and they win it. So this is one you don't have to convince your team that what you're saying is accurate. And you know what I'm talking about. Head coach always stands up in front of the team and says, guys, if we do this, this, and this, we'll win. And usually they say, if we win the turnover battle, we'll win. Well, here's the proof right there. Win the turnover battle, go on to victory. Now the guys believe you move on to the next lesson where you have to convince them this one is now planted. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. So long from Houston.